Hello lords and ladies, Private York here, back from the front, it's crazy out there. It's gonna get crazy in here too, probably, because we're heading back to Galanian for more. Laying down the law with me, Private Yorkie, in Rassel Varicius. Now, we just met the Desmonds and had a walk down the uh, Chaotic Isle with uh, the Azartas in their Elysium realm. That's not where we're going to go in yet. Now, we are at level 4. Some distance from level 5. We've cleared out all over this area. Cleared out a lot of stuff, actually. Uh, we haven't cleared this bit. She's, she's weak on stuff. Can't do nothing right now. Midnight ball. Let me pop outside here. Actually, let me go up here. Oh, and there's so up here too. Can't hide from me. Keep your calm. Now we're not gonna be streaming. We're not gonna be streaming this. Uh, which will mainly so fun. I may go back to it, but for now we're not gonna be streaming at all. We're gonna be doing videos. Grab all that. Uh, we haven't done Gwern Mansion. We need familiar for that. So far, solutions and Terabate Residence. And the Captain Wine Cellar. We're going to start by going back here. Now, we're a bit safe scummy because we could get interrupted any time. I've made to take part in something I don't want to do yet. So just to avoid it right now, we're going to the safe scum where we have. There are many rooms. Yes. Now it's been a while since we played this episode, or this run through, and you might have seen there were a couple of others I had in the meantime, just personally. Not all the way through by any means, but some done. The defender's heart greets you with unexpected liveliness. Beyond the walls of the tavern, the once bustling and festive city lies in ruins, but somehow none of that can be felt within these walls. The people in the room are talking, laughing, raising toasts, even softly singing. It doesn't look like a, a typical tavern revelry, nor is it the grim vigilance of recent days. Deal waves to you. He's sitting at a table with the trio you met previously, the knight, the half-elf and the red-headed halfling. Yoki, come! Let me introduce you to Ilan, Diana, and Curl, the fearless warriors of the League of the Inspiring Cart. Ilan pushes a mug of beer towards you and speaks softly. It was me who convinced her the best to use what Diana, Curl, and Ilan found for a little party. If you look out the window, you might think that the end times have come, and the abysses have devoured us all. I sought some simple pleasures, good food and good company. Could keep the gloom at bay, Ilan looks at you hesitantly. I understand. We need to continue living and fighting, however hard that might be, even amidst the chaos. Allow me to declare my support for the sealer's uh, decision as well, says Elon of the Hound Heart. Experience tells me that we should shed no tears until after our victory. If we start to mourn the fallen while the battle is still raging, we'll be jeopardising our efforts. Now is the time for rest. We'll bury the dead after the last demon has been driven from Canabras. Hey, you're all just going to sit there with grim faces. As I say, we get to know each other a little better. So we have better reason to toast. Tell me about you and your order, Ilan. A story is quite not very entertaining. I was born far to the south in Andorran. I lost my parents early, led the life of a simple mercenary, but often questioned the path I had chosen. I'm proud of my sword skills. I enjoy training and drills, and I'm not afraid of battle. Or risking my life for coin. It takes a special mindset to consider to choose that lot with no regret. If you want to risk your blood, uh, you have to want to risk your blood. 
I saw too many of my friends die and I wondered if it was worth it. So in the end, I decided to choose another path. Now if I'm going to lay down my life, at least it will for a good cause. That's how I ended up in Mendev and became a squire for the Hound Hearts. It's a small order. By tradition, it never has more than 12 members. And new members... And the new member is only knighted after the older line, uh, dies. We patrol the lands along the wood, Wardstone line and provide aid to travellers and settlers. Unfortunately, death is common among the Hound Hearts. I became a full knight two years ago after laying my mentor to rest. But I'm content with my choice. My place is among the Crusaders. I've been serving in the Eagle Watch for long, Janna. I signed up four days before the demon attack. Am I lucky or what? Janna lets out an overly boisterous laugh. I'm an apprentice of a famous fencing master in Midmon, and I learned a thing or two from him, believe me. I soon got bored fighting off bandits and getting involved in petty squabbles and bickering river kingdoms. I wanted a proper challenge, and you can't find a better place than Mende. And you know what? The moment I arrived, the demonic invasion began. My father would say that's no accident. They brought me here. Oh, the apology. One of the two. How about you, Curl? How did you end up in the Condemned? I just did what everyone else was doing. I grew up in the slums, where everyone stole a little or maybe smuggled or guarded stashes, so... Curl stared into his mug gloomily. But I never killed nobody, and I never did anything really bad. I got caught stealing and that's when they made me choose between prison and the condemned. Well, of course, I didn't want to go to prison. I'm not that good a fighter, but as Norgober is my witness, a thief can also be used in a war against demons. I've always been a good scout and sneak under the nose of any monster. But I don't know where my friends are now. They got separated when the demons rampaged through the city. You know, friend, whoever you were in the past, you're our friend now. You're a crusader. Your skills will be useful to us, you'll see. How do you all know, Sela? Elan says, I met my noble sister on the road, Canabres. I was returning from the south from my fiancé and was happy to be in the company of a paladin of Iamade. He said our farewells at the city gates and I went north along the road to Dresden, my order's camp. Elan's face grows grim at the mention of the camp. The demons attacked us there at the same time they struck Canabres. We managed to fight them off. We hurried to the city's aid and joined forces with the Eagle Watch. All my fellow Hound Hearts were wounded during the battle on the street. I'm the last of my order who can still fight. It's so good to see Sela again. Every loyal heart counts these days. I met Sela in a tavern in Canabras, said Phil. Before the attack, of course, she was one of the few who would sit at the table with the condemned knight. Usually, uh, condemned. Knights don't usually even look at us. But Sela is different. I knew it the moment I saw her. That's what me no, that's what made me notice Sela too. So I sat down to talk to her. Never understood why everyone treated the condemned so horribly, and I still don't. That girl is a great lad. So after that night, Sela and I went round the taverns together every day. Men have an amazing place, says Sela. People from all over the world come here for glory, redemption, or to help those in trouble. And they always find each other. This might be the best place in the world to find like-minded people and friends. That was a thought in case you didn't notice. So, Sela, did you call me over just because, or have you got something on your mind? I didn't just want to talk about today's celebration. You see, Elon is in trouble. Oh, I went to help. I want to help him, and I don't know anyone else in the city I can turn to. His fellow knights were all wounded in battle. Elon shakes his head. Bad idea, sister. I told you I don't want to bother anyone else with my problems. I need to handle them on my own. Oh, come on. Hiding sadness from your friends is no way to live. Tell me more. The young knight shakes his head. In all truth, I do not wish to impose. My problems are just minor troubles. A paladin of Iomade and a friend certainly have more important things to, this, uh, to do. Especially now that Canabres has been overrun by demons. I've learned anything in life, it's that there's nothing mind about good and evil. Sheila begins seriously, but then a smile lights face. Take the three of you, for example. It seems like all you did was save one cart from the lesser demons. But look how many people are happy now. That feat will never be sung of in song. And who knows, maybe thanks to this one joyous hour of peace and rest, the defenders of Canabres will find the strength to protect the city. Sheila catches her breath. I talk too much, on I? Well, Ellen... 
Uh, I want to help you. My reputation of holy warrior of Aomade won't suffer. More of minor adventures and a glorious feat. The night sighs and seems a little unbalanced. All right, I'll explain. The life of a crusader has given me more than just a purpose and a chance to serve the righteous cause. When I abandoned the life of a mercenary and came to Mendev, I gained something else I never expected. It's here that I met. My older ladies here, forgive me. The finest girl in all the world. The miracle she found in your loving a heart for a bungler like me. But I'm not about to let this miracle go. Not even the demon lord Descari and all his demon army can stand in my way. Luckily, my beloved is now safely away from Canapes. For half a year, I've been getting up my courage to propose to her. I even ordered a ring from Derek von Hammer, the best jeweler in Mendes. Independent nightly orders live mostly off donations, and I'm not what you would call rich. But I so want to make Kiana happy. Oh, it took me three months to find a jewel the same shade with her eyes, and twice that long to scrape together enough money. Master Derek's work was worth it. I lost the ring during the demon attack, and I'll probably never find a worthy replacement. The ring is most likely still at the Hound Hearts camp outside the city. Dylan and his friends didn't have time to pack up their camp. First the demons ambushed them, then they rushed off to help Knabres. I think we should at least go there and check. Not right now, of course. Once there's some situation in the city is under control. What could we run into at the camp? My friends and I killed two large demons and attacked the camp. Then rode straight to the city without spending any time cleaning up the rest of their band. It was only a few wimps. They might still be at the camp. Of course, that was a while ago. Our camp was attacked by the same, at the same time as the waterstone in the main square. I haven't been back since. Fine, no problem. I'll help you when we're done here. Ela puts her hand on the shoulder. On your shoulder. Thanks for agreeing to help. Elon is a good man and a true knight. And I think the world should repay those who are devoted to doing good. Let's help him. We can propose to his beloved the way he wants. Sheila, I hope you can convince her the best to let me go with you when you do this. I don't want to be parted from my friend. Of course, if the League of the Inspiring Cards has come together in this dark hour, let's continue onward together. That's a little bit of experience. I haven't got to go and find this secret yet. Spies, Percy Demons at Estrod. Find an item that will cleanse the ward stone. Oh, I've got to show it to the storyteller. Okay. Gather our life for the attack on the Great Garrison. Um, Prelate Holder on Seedlings and they've all joined. Wait and stay of execution. That's later. Later, that's later. Alright, so we need to talk to the storyteller. The blind elf whispers something under his breath, hearing your steps he turns to you slowly. Greetings, Jockey. Have you brought me a new story? I found this in uh, presenting the purple stone knife in the square where Sorrentolo perished. What do you make of it? Sorry, tell the reach out and safe softly. Even from here, I can feel strange energies emanating from this object. If you don't mind, I'll examine it using my method. I'll try to see the past of its owner and emotions and threads of their memories. Maybe it will help us better understand what we are dealing with. Dory tells us what she's a knife. His fingers clamping around the hilt with hungry, masterful grip. His face contorts into an evil grimace. His voice disgustingly raspy. Hunger. My many legs bring me into my lair, into the lair, to my mother's feasting hall. Her swollen body overfilled with food is so huge that I have to look at it with all my eyes at once. On top of her brawny little head. There's a long beak, but he's always yearning for more food. You feel feverish in your chest where the mysterious wound is concealed, feels hot. Your mind is flooded with a wave of visions. Visions that repeat the words of the old elf. My mother greets me with a placid screech. Stupid greedy wreck, whose only achievement is my birth. A creepy wingless creature. It's your fault I have no wings. A symbol of greatness, a birthright I did have received from my mighty father. Mother points me to a crowd of whimpering subjects, suggesting I fortify my, fort my, myself with their pathetic flesh. Not today. I summon my spawn and they fly to me, enveloping me in a teeming cloud. Like dark buzzing wings, they unfold behind my back and lift me up. Mother has always been stronger, 
but she did not expect this. I dive on her and rip her limp, bloated body with my claws. Ikor splatters the bone spurs on my heels, sink into her flesh. I clench her pitiful tiny head and tear it off, along with threads of meat. Victory. I am the strongest. I am the son of my winged father. The elf grimaces with distaste. His voice becomes normal again. Appalling. Stories like that are the most difficult ones to keep with me. This knife begins to belong to a demon. Sorry, tell Robin's mouth to an uh, answer. A sudden spasm crosses his face. A new vision. A much stronger one engulfs the old elf. The malevolent undertones vanish from and the voice he grows more determined and tired. Even looking at the ward stone is difficult. Despite the corruption nesting in it, it still has an aura of strength. Your fingers clench the stone hilt so tight it hurts. A little spot on the uh, flawless surface of the ward stone draws your attention. It looks like a butterfly, corruption in the guise of some, something utterly harmless. It will grow. You swing and stab the butterfly with the knife as hard as you can. Your fingers cramp painfully. A howl invades your ears. Light. White light everywhere. The stone knife falls from the old elf's hands. Out of breath, he drops to his knees. He's trembling. The terror on his face, so unlike his usual dignified manner. What? What was that? That was not the past. That was something that is yet to happen, or rather, might happen. One of the roads to the future. In one of the possible futures, this item will help you cleanse the wardstone or destroy it. You feel a, lo uh, a longing to take the stone chisel and plunge it into your chest right into the wound that has opened up in it. It's hard to resist this feeling, but at the last moment your self-preservation instinct kicks in, and you manage to keep control over your own hands. The old man stands up. He looks completely stunned. Never before has anything like this happened to me, but... Ow, I'm not an oracle or a prophet. But is this another riddle from the past that has caught up with me? I must find out. Seeing stories that happened is one thing, but seeing stories that are yet to happen? I don't know why this is happening now, but one thing is for certain. This is not a coincidence. This is a sign of coming changes. Great changes. I shared your vision and this night. It tempted me. Did you? See what I saw? This has never happened before. Could it be the magic of the object that brought, uh, that you brought me? I sense dark energies in it that can cloud and charm the mind. Be careful with this item. I may have, they may have tried to influence you, but you managed to overcome its power and subdue it. Or perhaps something else happened to Chris, something we don't yet understand. Can you see the future? I don't know, obviously I can, but nothing like this has happened to me before. The future never opened its secret to me, like before I met you. God, who are you and why have our paths crossed? I feel this is not a coincidence. Something momentous is happening. Destiny is pushing us towards something, but what? Questions without answers, I swear, this morning. I couldn't have imagined what awaited me. Maybe it's a knife that gives you the power of divination. It might be the powerful artifact, but I feel that its power is of a different nature. No, I feel the same way I do when I tell the past. This is my gift, but manifested in a completely abnormal way. Is what you saw destined to happen? No, the future is not set. It used to be a long time ago when the god Aragon guarded Galarian. Not now. Prophecies do not come true as they do, but not in the way that they're supposed to. I only saw one version of the future, one of the paths leading to it. But the choice has not yet been made. And our destinies are not set in stone. Who were you in your vision? I don't know, someone strong and desperate enough to resort to extreme measures. I felt that what I was doing had to be done. The powers are amazing. A few moments ago I would have agreed with you. The thing that has just happened, it disturbs me. My gift has never manifested like this. Something has changed. These changes frighten me. Well, look, why don't you examine the other things I'm carrying? Perhaps some of them could tell us a story. Storyteller nods politely. Let me touch him and I'll see what I can see. The old elf carefully takes Yaniel's sword radiance. Powerful forces lie dormant in this sword. It used to belong to an incredibly bright and daring soul. Storyteller's hand runs carefully over the scales. Does it still not last its shine? Proud to render their protector of Canabres, who devoted your life to serving people. Your death is a great loss. Maybe I will be able to find out something about you 
that is unknown to your many admirers. Dory tells Han touches Finian. What a peculiar weapon. I sense intelligence in it, but it seems dented. <laughs> Grandpa, help! What where you're poking your fingers? It tickles! The elf looks at you with unusual impatience. Shall we? Uh, we know about the knife body. Did forget that one? Present radiance. What do you see in its past? Dory Teller touches a blade with his finger. Sadness rings in his voice. Resin is doomed. Demons attack right when we lost the protection of the Sword of Valor. My city, my bastion of hope. We built you as a symbol. But the land mutilated by the abyss will still be restored to mortals. Now you are perishing. There is nothing I can do. We retreat. No, we flee. A frightened cloud, crowd rushes out into the night to the southern gate. They are chased by the angry howls of demons, killing the last defenders of the city. My heart goes out to them, but I am standing still on the wall. I am covering the retreat. Demons do not attack. They seethe around you, falling from the sky, right from all sides at once. They can't be stopped. They can be distracted. I run to the upper floor of the, great tower, of the gate tower. Radiance glows with a golden light in my hand. I permit myself to close my eyes for just one heartbeat. I imagine that the soft glimmering of the sword I see through my closed eyelids is the light of summer sun. I smile, I open my eyes and call out, Hey, discarded spawn, who wants the best trophy of the night? You know my name, Yaniel. You know how many of you I have killed with his very hand. You want the curry favour with Darazand, Minago, or the echo of your lord? Bring them my head, if you can. Roaring and screaming, they rush towards me in a wave of deformed bodies and unfurled wings. The wave crashes against me, battering my armour with bloody froth. Broken wings and chopped up bodies plummet to the foot of the tower. In the heat of battle, I see Joran's pale face down there. He looked up, my pe up at me in desperation. But he can't help, carrying two wounded on his shoulder. My city will fall, but my friends will survive. This is what I'm fighting for. I'm covering the retreat. The flow of fl fleeing people gradually dwindles. My armour is broken in many places and I cannot heal my wounds anymore. The last demon I stabbed with radiance suddenly recoils, tearing the handle out of my blood stricken hand. <coughs> he flies up, but falls somewhere far beyond the walls. By the road, being taken by those fleeing. No more golden glow in my hand. The night closes in on me. Filled with shrieking, mocking demon laughter. Resin, I am dying with you. Light of the sword, right is there on my day, accept my soul. The sordid teller runs his hand along the blade with a sad smile. I know whose memory this is. I've heard about her so many times. Yanniel was a true crusader. Touching her memories is so cleansing. You see the future of the sword? Just one of many numerous possibilities. The elf touches the sword hilt and metal rings in his voice. I slide out of the sea swiftly. I proudly watch the army of warriors led by my lord. I sing, slashing the air, putting courage in their hearts. I am Radiance. Tremble, city of Desmond, my lady Yaniel has perished. I am not done yet. Charge! Glory Teller returns the sword to you. Nice to know that this sword's glory day is not yet over. It has many battles ahead. Take care of it. It's a glorious sword. Tell me about Terendaleb. Storyteller takes a deep breath and smiles. I am flying. I can finally spread my wings. I am gliding over a broad river. The sunset has turned its surface smooth like a mirror. And I see my reflection. It's as if another silver dragon is rising to meet me from the depths. But what is it? The scales on my chest are black and the darkness is spreading over my body. I wake up a clear sky wave above me, blazing with heat. I am in human form. The red dust of the wound clings to my cracked lips. Someone is carrying me on a stretcher made of shields and spears. I am so weak I can barely lift my hand to my face. The sight of my own hand terrifies me. It is black and the skin glistens like scales melted by fire. I probably ought to cry, but I only feel hatred and nausea. All these people around me, out of sympathy for them, did I choose to leave the mountain. I gave up my flights over rivers. I went to the demon's lair. They don't even have a scratch on them. But I am infested with foulness. It's not fair. My life is more precious than their pathetic existence. Oh, how I hate them in this moment. And then suddenly I feel shame. No, no. These are not my thoughts. The crusaders carrying me are my good friends. I am glad they did not suffer. 
but I hate them and myself so much. Pain and hatred pierce me of all at once. It's all because of them, all because of them. Someone walking beside me touches me, talks to me. But the only thing I hear is, your mentor, he will come, he will help, and I lose consciousness. The storyteller takes a deep breath and exits the vision. Such hatred from Terentlev wants your nerve side. Terentlev has come a long way. Her unit was ambushed by demons once, and she was infected with foulness. The Terentlev you met in Kenabrit had gone through many trials and gained a form of purity. So what happened next? The storyteller puts his hand on his forehead. Sometimes the past can be as vague as the future. We all know how Terentlev's story ended. But the beginning is hidden from us. Maybe find something else that used to belong to her. We will know more about her struggle. However, no matter what we learn, remember her soul, the soul of a true dragon, overcame every obstacle, endured every torment. She was able to purify herself. The dragons are truly powerful, not only in body, but in spirit too. I think I have to take a break. Just give me a minute. Give me a quick second to pause to the listen. Right. However, no matter what we learn, uh, what we learn, remember the house all those rolled over through dragon overcame every obstacle and endured every torment. She was able to purify herself, the dragons are truly powerful. Not only in body, but in spirit too. No opinion, tell me what you see. Hello, Grandpa Elf. Sorry, tell her carefully takes Finian from your hands. Hello, Finian. He closes his eyes and takes a deep breath. His face contorts into a painful grimace. I I'm coming to again. How long have I been here? They kept me in a cage for three days. I know this because three times the light under the door disappeared for a long time. Then they chained me to a table and the bladesmiths, everyone calls him the bladesmith, he placed a device with a jar over me. It feels like I'm being fried. At first I tried to break free but I got tired, then I screamed. Now I've lost my voice. And the burn, pain is burning right through me. Story teller stopped, his voice changes, becoming more frightened. I think I lost consciousness again. But when I woke up the pain was gone and I wasn't tied to the table anymore. I was standing near it. <coughs> And someone else was lying on the table, a burnt corpse covered with a black crust. The master took out a handsaw and was sawing off his head in a very focused way. I should have run back then, but I couldn't for some reason. This burnt corpse has a symbol on his belt just like I do. An eye and a star. My favourite belt, a good one. Where would a stranger get one? It must have been someone from my clan, some distant family member. The storyteller stops. When he speaks again, you hear a muffled, only a muffled whisper. Those crusaders? I was glad when I saw them. I thought they'd come to help, but how, how was it that I killed them all? Someone told me to and I obeyed. I don't understand. I understand nothing now. I, I need to catch my breath. Oh, I, I need all this, even just for a moment. I just have to, have to understand what's happening to me. Just need to rest. The storyteller shakes his head. Slowly coming to his senses. That is Finian's past. But what awaits him in the future? The dead have no future, but the storyteller smiles. I see an endless ocean on a good day and a boat flying over the waves. I'm so excited, but I don't know whose vision this is. Is it a soul existing here and now, or a soul reborn? Well, thank you for your story. The storyteller gives Finian back to you. Please take care of this young lad. He's finally in the right hands. Do not worsen his suffering by involving him in dishonourable deeds. Come on, Grandpa Elf, I can take care of myself. I'm not a kid. I don't know what horrors you were talking about, but please don't worry about it, alright? Look after you. Okay, we've got more important things to do now. I have to go. <coughs> Don't need to do Gwern. He'll be at level 3. Oh. 
or equivalent of level 3 because of the drain. And I'm at 2487 to get to level 5. I'm wondering. I want them. Get rid of all the stuff I don't need. Right. Now you, we can get rid of that. You. Used a lot, but never mind. What's if we're not worried about right now? You're completely exhausted. We're gonna need to sleep, but not right now, I guess. We're gonna head out. And decide what to do next. If I want to go to Gwerm, I need to take you with me. And that will give us access to all of this lot, won't it? I need to do Tower of Estrod still. I reckon we can do that. Let's save though. Right. We need to do that. I want to rest up. We have any other no we don't have any other meal types, okay. I have a new idea for a new pastime for you and your little friends. Picnics mongrel style. Rat tail soup, salad made from suspect mutated mushrooms, and constant <coughs> attacks from cave monsters on all sides while you eat. That sounds like it will be all the rage next season. <laughs> Day 22, month out of the site. Year 47. 
Sometimes a long way to rest does not bring the desired relief. What comes is a heavy clinging sleep on the edge of wakefulness. Their consciousness seems poised between reality and oblivion. Possible reasons for such disturbed slumber are myriad. They nerves, perhaps, or a lingering reaction to trauma. Yorkie emerges from the oblivion of his leaden sleep like a drowned man dragging himself up from the depths of a swamp. The wound in his chest is burning like someone pressing an invisible brand to it. A wound as close again, but the blood stained on his shirt betrays its presence beneath. No time to investigate the cause of his malaise. The training day lies ahead. How will Yorkie be up to the challenge if his thoughts are so muddled and his entire body aches like after a day's toil? Nonsense. I've dealt myself in some cold water and be as good as new. As if a veteran adventurer could be frightened by a bad thing. A splash of cold water enlivens his senses and the weariness abates, retreating to the depths of his subconsciousness, leaving the path open to return the next time Yorkie seeks refuge in sleep. Yorkie recalls that he slept peacefully in the defender's heart. Perhaps the priest can explain what's happened and why the difference. That means I need to talk to Vasily again. <clears throat> nope, we're not doing that. So I am this little bit I will save some. We'll fight them. Watch yet another obstacle. Twenty three ninety seven. More enemies. Did we find trouble? No, they did. Now we'd scouted this out, but we want to actually take him down. I heed the voice of the spirits. I welcome your company. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. Line weapon to goodness. Is there trouble? Ah, that's not what I want us to do. I'm going to load that again. Not what I wanted to. 
I actually just want land to go that way, not everyone, because everyone will get will disturb everything. No, not all of you. Not all. Not all of you. The mongrel did it. You can do that, Lan. Thanks, Lan. You are so awesome. Taking some of them down already. Move catastrophe round. That's him done. No glory without risk. Him done. Survive me. So it comes to this. Even the ruby cultists have got the uh, reduction, huh? I will see to your demise. Now that might be me having to take a quick break. No, it's not yet. Uh, They say it took by the bin running. Away, you rascal. Not good. Well, oh, that was good. Okay. That was nice. That just leads back to you. There we go. Oh, there's someone else. Oh, this one. In the 
into the grime down there. There we go. Oh, it's a demon's done. 1902 left. To the basement. A book. A bunch of stuff. Who oh, says Kai? A pale and frightened half elf looks at you wearily. His face is twisted into a grimace like he just ate something slimy. Hey! Who are you? Hey, praise Baphomet! What are you doing here? Did Faxon send you? I heard a noise outside, but I was just making a list of relics. Something happened? Who are you? I'm Telma the scribe and senior aide to Lord Zanthor the plagued one. And do forgive me, but Faxon has been signed to this command, has he not? Where is he? What are you doing here? I'm compiling a list of valuable Crusader artifacts. Lord Zanthia has ordered that everything of use can be transported to the Canabrite and saved from the looting and destruction. He chose the museum as a place to collect and sort through all the trophies. <laughs> and what some of the local thieves have proved even quicker off the mark than us. They ransacked the museum for the first few hours of the assault. But there are some objects of interest in the exhibits left behind. The museum custodian has been kind enough to advise me on those, but where is that? Hmm? Yeah, all that later. Where's the museum custodian? Over in the gallery, I deceived him. I told him I was a crusader. It wasn't difficult. The old geezer is out of his mind, so tell me, where is Faxon? <clears throat> yeah, well, about Faxon. About those relics. You can get your ruddy hand off them before I kill you. <coughs> The half elf leaps back nimbly, pulling a sheaf of papers from his bag as he goes. No way, a valuable letters from Lord Zanthor here, I must destroy them. He pulls his balls a page up into his fish and shoves them into his mouth. Then begins furiously chewing like a hamster. A moment later, the half elf's eyes bulge and he opens his mouth, which is stuffed with masticated paper. He tries to come, but nothing comes out. The pale saboteur looks at you in desperation. His eyes are streaming, his face is growing paler by the skin, and he falls to his knees. A strangled wheeze emerges from behind the water wet paper. His expressions fear from hilarious to grotesque, as he signals for you to help. Want some salt and pepper with that? No, I've tried eating never I've never tried eating paper myself. But a little seasoning goes a long way, whatever the meal. Comfiture. A perfect accompaniment for paper is after got comfiture. How do I know this? An excellent question. As a child, I once eat a piece of my exercise book in front of my horrid music teacher. The spider. <coughs> now, this is why we don't eat paper, you see. Let's watch what happens. The half elf falls into convulsions, grappling at his throat. For all the time, he looks at you in terror. I stand it to his com uh, horrific demise. What an idiot goddess, funny some more. At least we can see the kind of mind that's where to lead you to a demon lord. I wish all the cultists were as dumb as this one. At least the wretch did one good thing in his life, giving us a bit of entertainment before he popped his clogs. There and saved in a bored monotone. It all ends quickly, the half elf lifeless eyes stare up at you in a silent rebuke. There are many rebuke this fool, you just choked yourself to death. Oh, there's Teldon, there's the museum creator. Let's get everything off of these shelves, shall we? The old man looking around absent mindedly thinks away as you get closer. His head seems to shake uncontrollably, but his hands are surprisingly deaf. And as you they level a magic wand at you. Stay back! We tell you, robber or demon. Lower the wand or else! The old man goggles at you in terror, but he doesn't lower his wand. A rustling comes from somewhere behind him. Rat. The old man wheels around fearfully and peers into the direction the sound came from. The hand holding the wand gradually falls to his side. When he turns back to you, there is fear in his expression. And only vague confusion. There is no fear in his expression, only vague confusion. 
You... I'm sorry, what's the text? What were we talking about? Who are you? I think it's the curator. The old man lowers his wand and confused. I think the expression grows distraught and mournful. So he's on the verge of trying. I forget his gaze falls on the piece of cloth. Carefully sticks to his cloak, which reads Teldon, Tower of Estron Museum Custodian. Ah, I'm Teldon, the custodian here. My memory, memory isn't one, what it once was. Yeah, I guess not. My faculties are failing me. But at one time, my mind could cut like diamond. I was a battle mage, one of the few survivors of the Battle of the Lost Chapel. But I'm an old man now. Sometimes I set my keys down one moment, and the next I cannot remember where I put them. With a pleased smile, the old man pulls a heavy set of keys from his pockets. I'm proudly told him you. Here they are, my keys, my little lovelies. I would never give them away to anyone. Remembering himself, the old man hastily stores the keys back in his pocket. Lost Chapel? Ah, the old man was there. The old fellow was there. That his mind was damaged isn't surprising. What's surprising is that the old codger can still speak at all. In the entire history of the Crusades, which aren't exactly uplifting, this is one of the bloodiest chapters. Some time ago, I wanted to know what became of the abandoned fortifications and estates the Crusaders left behind. I read through the accounts of Lost Chapel veterans. That was a real bloodbath. Give me the keys. Now the question, according to museum protocol, the custodian does not have the right to hand over the keys. I am personally responsible for the safety of the exhibits in the storeroom. Don't you understand? This museum holds things that could help in a fight against the demons. Fighting his lip, the old man holds out the keys. So you're right, I'm just an old duffer. Take whatever will help and go defend our city. Alright, I'm going. Bye. See what else there is. One thousand eight hundred and something, seventy-eight of it. There's something unusual. I hope you appreciate this. I am helpful, am I not? And over here. I am helpful, am I not? No, I'm particularly trying, but they're all lots. Right, we'll see what else there is in this room here. That's a tower empty, so... Got a chain shirt here. White armour. You could wear that. Better than chain shirt you got there in every way there is. We got uh Entrapid Longbow. What what longbow do you have? Oh you got Finian. Give you the entrapping longbow. Someone else can have Finian. You can have Finian. Some info out of these. In case any of them actually help me with anything. Right. Keep your calm. And we can leave. One eight fifty one. I want to reach level 5, and then we'll end.
Might not even quite make it all the way there. I might have to stop now, but we'll see. I keep being pinged by my dear lady wife, but she's not saying anything that hits me to go yet. We've seen. <laughs> yes, let's see what I do. Worms Manor. Well, I'm not doing that one. I'm waiting on that one. I want to do level 5 for that one. Oh no! I just did all of that! Alright, well I do have to take a break. What I'm going to do off channel is catch up with where we were because we've done all this. And then uh, I'll, I'll come back next time when we've just finished this. Bye now.